Hello and welcome once again to another episode of HighTechFever.tv, the show that interviews inventors, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and other key players in the Greater Cambridge Technology Venture Zone, including scholars, researchers, academics, and others who care about the innovation landscape very broadly. I'm your host, Jos Ponson, and I'm delighted to have back in the studio uh, here at HighTechFever.tv, uh, Justin Cook, who is a scholar, a researcher in the realm of all things behavioral, economic, and social. Justin, delighted you're here. Oh, thanks. It's great to be back. Maybe you could, well, remind people of where we left off the conversation uh, last time, and, and maybe just a little context of what it is that, that, that you've been uh, up to. Sure, sure. Well, uh, you know, my interest overall, I'm interested in uh, experimental approaches mm -hmm. to uh, judgment and decision making, uh, how we all work and, and how we decide things, and, uh, you know, then how that uh, comes to play uh, in the real world when it comes to uh, topics of entrepreneurship, innovation, et cetera, sure. some of the applied areas. So these are, these are actually quite ripe. It may seem like a scholarly or academic thing, but you're asking questions that have real world import. How leaders take decisions in organizations, how they influence their fellow you know, people in the company, mm -hmm. whether it's employees or peers or you name it. How companies engage with customers. Right, how you attract sure. customers, how you identify what they want. I mean, these are non-trivial things. It's not a straightforward matter of inventing some of some hard widget. Right. Well, and especially when, when this kind of breaks down, when mm. we do these things that uh, are a little bit irrational. They're not what... They're not, <laughs> they're, what, uh, they're not rational, uh, rational man sometimes. theory yes. following. That's right, that's right. Following. Just give us an example, if you would, of, of that kind of you know, something unorthodox or something that, that, that's not to theory and yet it happens all the time. Sure. Uh, well, we talked uh, last time, for instance, uh, about this experiment uh, where we'd look at the last two digits of a social security <laughs> number That's and you'd, you'd do something called anchoring on that. And depending on whether your digits were low or high, if it was the first number that you saw and you considered it in a purchase decision, if your numbers are high, you're willing to pay a lot more than if your numbers were low. Even when the social security number is, is, a, is a placeholder for a ra random number, right? Sure, exactly. You get a pool of, pool of people in a room, ask them, you know, the last two digits. It's essentially random, which means that if you're trying to sell them something like a bottle of wine, uh, whether it's a low number or a high number, it's grim. And that anchors. Sure. So what's the follow-on? To say the bottle of wine case, if, if, I, if I ask you to look at your number and then say, would you buy a bottle for that, how does that anchor people? Well, I in a few ways. I mean, uh, one of it, one one aspect of it is literally just the number. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason, if you if you get someone to think about a number if in the context of purchasing, that uh, that, that drives the decision. But you know, and and we may get into this as well. Uh, you know, some of the the kind of follow-ons to that is that how do we know what we value in the first place? Right. It kind right. of puts a lot of things at question, right? Oh, certainly. Yeah, What's yeah. going on if you're willing to change your valuation by a huge range, right? Plus or minus, you know, 50 points or something. Yeah, and it, I mean, uh, to put it in the context of the same experiment, it's one thing to know whether you'd pay more or less for a bottle of wine. It's another to know whether or not you enjoy wine or if, if you should be paying me to take the bottle of wine. So it, it turns out uh, that in certain circumstances, our... You know, perception of you know things that are good or things that are bad is is fairly arbitrary. It's just wide range. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm hoping we can spend a little bit of time talking more today about this. Uh, just a, a little reminder of people for 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 those of you out there that, that you know we've known each other now for for a good chunk of time from your days at MIT at Sloan MIT, School. MIT, yes. Um, heavily involved, Justin. You're heavily involved in both the marketing club and the innovation club. And I think one of the unusual people in in wearing those two hats. Always being interested in both, yeah. they, they they attracted by and large different constituencies within mm -hmm. the MBA program. Why did you stop? Well, I, I think uh, as we kind of discussed last time, some of it uh, is that the value can be found in the intersection of things Indeed. sometimes. So, uh, the marketing, uh, you know, aspects for me were about the behavior. Mm. You know, the idea of uh, you How know, better understanding, you know, choices yeah. and 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 what's going on in our minds. Uh, but uh, behavior plays out in innovation as well. I mean, uh, all the way from uh, your your lone inventor, you know, trying to be creative and the type of decision making that goes on there. What ideas get thrown out? What get kept? What get followed on? Uh, to commercialization hmm. of technology. Uh, so uh, you know, in large R and D labs, there may be 
vast amounts of intellectual property that are kind of sitting there and how do we make the decisions about which to bet on and how to how to know Mm -hmm. all that or how do we even value it indeed well so this is this is that i distinctly recall because it was it was um i think quite healthy for all the reasons you just you just articulated that 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 being at this intersection is really invigorating right i mean it's a it's a way to 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 explore stuff that that other people don't yet get or they're not they're not appreciating which i think is is really that the circumstance you're 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 in now the kind of the kind of scholarly research agenda you're pushing towards and and things that you've been interested in is is really once again at this at this intersection maybe give us a little you know, broader sense of, of the big picture for you. Well, uh, you know, I just came back from my uh, conference in Chicago. Ah, the, okay. Uh, Society of uh, Judgment Decision Making Conference. Society so. of Judgment. It sounds like a convention of lawyers or, <laughs> well, we <all> <laughs> or judges the there for the most part. But, uh, <laughs> all right. But uh, yeah, there's about uh, 500 different uh, researchers and scholars from around the world. So these are professors and faculty members, research yeah, types from universities, exactly. or more business and, types, or both. Uh, mostly uh, university researcher types, uh, graduate students through ah, okay. you know, tenure sure, faculty. Sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was great. It was a chance to see kind of the latest and greatest yeah. of, uh, of what's going on in the field. Uh, and, you know, people there representing, you know, kind of disciplines in marketing yeah. to, uh, you know, even biological uh, yeah. research and decision making to uh, more organizational behavior type work. And those disciplines within, you know, academia are, are in it's sometimes totally different departments, totally different schools. I mean, I'm thinking yeah. of, you know, the MIT case. You've got marketing folks within the Sloan School of Management, uh, but in there's psychologists. And there's also psychologists over in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the in a School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, but those are very different. And, and, and you, you also have those types over in, in urban planning because you've got mm-hmm. people living in, a, in an urban arena and how do you get stuff done there? Well, it's very much right. a sort of social psychology problem. Uh, so these disciplines are all over the place, but they're coming together for this conference. That's right. And this this community does a pretty good job of no matter where you are. I mean, the, some of the more famous folks like uh, Kahneman at Princeton is now uh, more in the so with Wilson School, Woodrow Wilson School. This is like diplomacy. Law of the more uh, governance it can be, like but the, the the experimental basic research is still is you know very similar to to what's being ah, done. Ah, interesting. Areas. So and people really, it's across. even d- independent of your method or your discipline, you may find a home in lots of different kinds of institutions. It sounds like that's right. And Kahneman, just to remind people, this guy's important for many things, but uh, very much. Well, uh, Kahneman and Tversky, of course, uh, the fathers of prospect theory, which is uh, near and dear to my heart, of course. Uh, uh, given, given, I'll plug my blog here. It's uh, www.prospecttheory.net, uh, where I've been, uh, you know, writing on topics uh, like those discussed today, as well as uh, uh, you know others uh, about papers, etc. So, give give us some sense of when you say experimental approach to mm-hmm. to these kind of questions. What does it mean to do an experiment with? people in the loop. I mean, normally experiments, people think, you know, biologists with cells in a, right. in a t- Petri dish. So Sounds like we're doing some kind of Frankenstein. It, well, thing, uh, all right, what right, is it? Right. Well, so an experimental method in the social sciences, uh, like psychology, mm-hmm. etc., is, is very similar to experimental method used in, uh, you know, the harder scientific mm-hmm. disciplines, okay. such as chemistry or biology. What you're wanting to do is to isolate the, the variables that you're interested in, and in a very controlled way, mm-hmm. uh, you know, find out how much that variable affects an outcome that you're interested in. So w- with a lot of these uh, judgment decision-making type experiments, you'd you know have, uh, have someone read a sort, mm. short uh, paragraph that explains a situation and then ask them to tell you, you know, what they would do or how much they would pay, et cetera. And uh, by, by doing it in that way, you're trying to just hone in on, you know, one or two factors okay. that you're of interest in. And, and, and you've got, you do this on ha- how many people? Well, you know, it, it depends on the design, but you know, it, just to be uh, you know statistically significant, you need you know fifty, hundred, maybe you know. hundreds, and, and and you're doing uh, y- at least two different pools of, of y- the same basic setup, but then you're asking some people one set of things, and other people s- have some different set of things. That's right. And it's then you always can compare. important to have a control, yeah. and uh, you know that uh, that takes out the variable, yeah. and then you know so you can see the uh, the the importance in the relevance.